morning and welcome to McNulty's Book Corral. I'm your host, Thomas McNulty, and today we're talking about man bait paperbacks. That's right. What a what kind of a term is that? Man bait. Um, you know, it's a little it's a little suggestive. When I say man bait, what image comes to your mind? <laughs> you know, maybe it's a curvaceous, uh, a curvaceous blonde. Maybe it's a brunette. Something, uh, some attractive female walking down the street man bait uh you know it's not a term that uh, everybody approves of but it is a term that's used in relation to certain types of paperbacks uh especially vintage paperbacks now essentially let's take a look at one love thief by ori hit ori hit interesting guy uh ori edwin hit 1916 1975 ori hit remains popular all these years later collector's items these are essentially romance novels for men that is also not a way of expressing these types of books that's popular people prefer to say man bait men prefer to say they're man bait women don't like this stuff at all um generally not always um so these paperbacks appeal to men uh, because of the romantic physicality that may that might be involved in the storytelling and being as diplomatic as possible here now i want to stress Here's another Ori hit, The Widow. These are not pornographic novels that I'm holding up here. They are suggestive. They are semi-explicit. I wouldn't say that they're always even that. Uh, the plots are often convoluted and dramatic. You know, they're really soap operas in a way. Highly popular for vintage book collectors. Obviously, I have some. Ori hit. Here's another Ori hit, uh, The Love Season with a saucy cover. <laughs> so, you know, so again, man bait paperbacks uh are quite popular with collectors here's the pushover by ori hit ori hit remains one of the most uh, sought after vintage paperback writers out there and i'm just going to show you some titles so here are two by Stuart james frisco flat and judge not my sins now these two were really interesting to me because the writing was really quite good uh, these are dramas I don't really think of these as even romance novels, although, you know, that's the market man bait. I get it. But uh, they're really dramatic plots, convoluted plots, a, a lot of suspense sometimes. These authors would mix uh, suspense into these. So I don't know anything about Stuart James, by the way, but there is a seems to be a following for titles that he wrote. Whoever he is or was, uh, I don't always know. Um, you know, it's hard to... Uh, Hard to find all this stuff. Um, so we have uh, The Love Seekers by Jay Carr. Now this one was, this is really a, a romance novel for men. You can tell by looking at it. Um, Girl on the Beach, here's another one. So to say something is a romance novel is something that gets the critics into a, a, a frenzy because critics really are often, and I'm sorry to generalize this, they're really not always that bright and they're not always really nice people Be people that make their living as critics you know it seems like you know such a smarmy thing to even do that but they do uh there are good critics and there are bad critics um, when it comes to referencing romance novels whether they be romance novels for women such as this harlequin title which by the way was excellent all right take a look at that l james or uh yeah, L. James, I have no idea. This is a pen name, obviously. Uh, suspense, intrigue, show of force. Good action scenes in this. All right, so that's a romance. This is a romance Harlequin that was published for women, yet men can enjoy it as well. So there's a disparity there. So, you know, the critics all lump it together, and they and they disdain it, and they make fun of it, and they say, oh, it's just a romance novel. You know, and they scratch up their face like this, and they go, <laughs> you know, and they make themselves look as stupid as they often are. Uh, that was that was cruel of me, uh, but um, here's one bait. Boy, does that tell you the story right there? <laughs> so, you know, it's they're fun to read. You know, here look at April North, third big printing. Okay, um, you know this stuff isn't bad. In the '60s, we had the Naked Spy. Now, some of these do, you know, do get to be a little more explicit. Um, you know, now Matt Harding, who was really, I think Matt Harding was really Lee Florian. I'd have to look that up. Uh, here are two that were clearly uh, 
published to attract the male audience. The cover art gets you in. You can't always judge a book by its cover, but often you can. You just never know. So uh, the writing is good. And the point I'm making here is that genre writing is good writing. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that. Young Wife, okay, look at that. Um, after Office Hours, that tells the story about what's going on in those high-rises, maybe in New York or Chicago. And then some of them were a little more explicit than others, such as this. And then the back, it says, Beatnik Girls and Boys together, okay, romance. So, uh, and then Wait Your Turn and so forth. So you get the idea. Now, again, the point here and the reason I'm talking about what we refer to as man bait paperbacks is that genre writing touches a chord with people. There's a demand for it. It exists for a reason. And the writing is often really quite good. Ori Hit comes to mind, okay? Um, Matt Harding, Lee Florian, all of these writers out there so many others that did this, they were good writers. They knew how to tell a story, a good narrative structure. I know that, you know, that it's not F. Scott Fitzgerald. It wasn't intended to be like The Side of Paradise by F. Scott Fitzgerald or The Great Gatsby. You know, it was intended to entertain. These are entertainments. So, you know, uh, again, literature encompasses a lot of different ideas, a lot of genres, a lot of fun things. Man bait paperbacks are romance novels for men. There's nothing wrong with that. They are highly collectible. You can Google this. You can find groups on Facebook devoted to these types of books, and, and they're fun to collect. There are people that look for the artwork. The original artwork is collectible as well, the Windy City Pulp and Paper Convention in Chicago. I wanted to end with one from England because it has the best title. It's a Spike Morelli. I think uh, Reginald Heed did the artwork on this. It's Coffin for a Cutie. Uh, so if that doesn't get you worked up, I don't know what, well, you're, you need to take some vitamins. All right. So, so anyways, thank you for checking in. Feed, feed your brain, you know, stay well, stay happy, feed your brain and read some romance novels. Why not?